three ingredient keto chocolate mousse. Hey, my name is Olivia Wiles and this is my channel where I share easy keto recipes made for real life. Three, five, seven ingredient recipes that you can make in your real life. So let's get started. Today, we're going to be making three ingredient keto chocolate mousse. Now this is a staple, I believe, when it comes to desserts. I had one reader say that they like to keep it in the freezer or the fridge, can't remember which, and, or maybe, maybe both. Maybe sometimes they had it in the fridge, maybe sometimes they had it in the freezer. Anyways, they would make a giant bowl of it and just take like one scoop out of it at a time. Now I'm sure this was just their chocolate mousse. I don't advise like a family chocolate mousse situation. <laughs> when they had a little bit of sweet cravings, they would go to their handy dandy chocolate mousse in the fridge or freezer, can't remember which one, and they would take a little bite and that would be it. That would be all they needed just to get through their day. So if that's what you need to get through your day, then chocolate mousse it up. So how do we make three ingredient chocolate mousse? That is keto friendly, low carb, sugar free, diabetic friendly. How do we make three ingredient keto chocolate mousse? The first ingredient is going to be heavy whipping cream or heavy cream. In the States, I don't think we can get heavy cream. Correct me if I am wrong, but I was reading the difference between heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, and it really, there really isn't a difference just in the name. For whatever reason in the United States, we can only get the heavy whipping cream. I have never seen just heavy cream in my grocery store. Now I live in a small town, so maybe that's why, but I've never seen it like Whole Foods or anywhere like that. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we can only get heavy whipping cream. So heavy cream for the rest of the world. For the heavy cream, I normally am using a grocery store heavy cream. And today I was forced to buy the not store brand, a actual brand, which is fine because this is actually a organic brand. We pledge not to treat our cows with the growth hormone RBST. Okay, so no growth hormones. I don't think it's organic though. Anyways, there's a cow on the front, so that's cheerful. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using heavy whipping cream. Ooh, and I like that they put the carbohydrates on here. A lot of people think there are zero carbs in heavy whipping cream, and that is just not true. If you ever see zero carbs on a nutrition label, be suspect, be suspicious, because there's probably a teeny tiny bit of carbohydrates, but the nutrition facts, people don't have to publish that. So always look in the ingredients for hidden sugars and always assume there's at least one carb per serving and then calculate your macros from there. But we're not gonna get sciency but I do care about your macros. The second ingredient is a sugar-free sweetener of some kind, some keto approved sweetener. Now you don't have to use the brands that I use. However, different brands of keto sweeteners behave differently from one brand to the next. Even if it says monk fruit on this brand and monk fruit on this other brand, it might not be the same. They might not source their sweeteners from the same spot on the earth. So it might behave differently. So different brands will behave differently. The sugar-free sweetener that I use the most is going to be Lakanto. Lakanto I've been working with for several years and every single product that I have tried sounds, tastes, and looks exactly like what is on the label. <laughs> So what is on the label is going to be accurate. I'm going to be using the monk fruit baking sweetener. I use the baking sweetener because it actually behaves even more like sugar. So you have less 
keto baking fails. Let me just tell you, if you do have a keto baking fail, don't throw it away. It can always be repurposed. You can always take that keto baking fail and repurpose it into something else. Don't throw away all your expensive ingredients. You worked hard for that, so just repurpose it into something else that might resemble something that would taste good. The third ingredient is going to be unsweetened cocoa powder. Now you can use any cocoa powder. You can use Hershey's, which is what I'm using today. I typically like to use the more fancy brands like Ghirardelli, just because higher quality cocoa. So if I'm making like a holiday dish for a party, I wanna go with the fancy cocoa. But if it's just me, I just use good old fashioned Hershey's cocoa powder. And you're gonna wanna use the 100% cacao, naturally unsweetened. The ingredient is gonna be cocoa, period. That's it. One cup of heavy whipping cream, one fourth cup of sugar-free sweetener, and one fourth cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. So let's get into how to make it. Number one, grab a mixing bowl of your choice, preferably medium sized. So take that mixing bowl, we're gonna add the one cup of heavy whipping cream and the one fourth cup of sweetener. With an electric mixer, mix on medium speed until the mixture thickens slightly. We're not going to let the peaks form yet. Then add the cocoa powder to the bowl and whip it on high until stiff peaks form. Take that lovely mixture and add it to a dessert glass of choice or like my one reader, just throw it in a bowl and throw it in the fridge and then take a scoop out whenever you feel like it. Erythritol? Anyways, 